begin by inviting the Holy Spirit into this moment. So God, we just thank you for SNL. We thank you for um, Pastor David, God. We thank you for this opportunity to just come together and worship you. So we just commit our hearts to you and um, just thank you for Jesus. In his name we pray. You inhabit the praises of your people.
thank you, Jesus, for that truth that when we invite you into our hearts, God, not only do you change us, but you live in us that your Holy Spirit becomes part of our spirit, God. And we just thank you for that truth. We thank you for for your gifts, God, for your talents, for your power, for your healing. We thank you for all the things that we can't do without you, God. So we just um, bless your name, Lord. And we just pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Hello and welcome to Saturday Night Life. Uh, once again, my name is David Buzza and I'm the lead pastor here at Northbridge Church. Northbridge is the umbrella under which SNL is a ministry of. And uh, I can tell you on behalf of Northridge, we love this ministry. We love the people that are involved with it. We love partnering with you as we walk together, worshiping together and learning more from his word learning about Jesus. I, I think I said this last week, that uh, what we want to do at SNL is we want to preach Jesus, preach Jesus, preach Jesus. We want you to know him. In the end, that's who we want to be. We want to be people who follow Jesus. So when you hear all the stuff going on in the world today and you hear stories of Christians behaving badly, we are not followers of Christians. We are followers of Jesus. So if you're not a fan of Jesus, uh, you probably won't be a fan of what I'm going to be sharing today or what we'll be sharing here at SNL. But if you take the time, uh, if you have big ears, soft hearts, and you listen to who this Jesus was as a man and who he is as the Son of God, uh, my best guess is that you're going to fall in love with him too. And you will want to become a follower of Jesus. Um, last week, I, I think I read maybe about 10 verses. Usually we really like to camp in the word. Today I might even be worse. Today I'm just going to tell you a bit about chapter 2. We're in Luke chapter 2. Last week we taught a little bit about who the author Luke was. We taught last week, remember we said we were kind of preaching to your head. We we're trying to give you an understanding that what Luke has done here is provide reasonable, researched material so that you can know Jesus. Today, let me just tell you that Luke 2, and I would encourage you to read this for yourself, Luke 2, chapter 2, is all about the birth of Jesus. And we're just coming out of the Christmas season. Uh, if you're not familiar with the story of the birth of Jesus, I would encourage you to um, go to our North Ridge, North Ridge website, go under media, and look up our Christmas Eve service. Because in it, we detail, we actually read all the scripture from Luke 2 and, and other pieces that piece together the story of the birth of Jesus. So as I mentioned, today I want to preach from my heart to yours. Uh, Luke 2 is all about the birth of Jesus. And um, I, I don't know all of your individual backgrounds. Some of you are born and raised in the church. Others of you have no understanding of who Jesus is. Let me give you a quick um, story narrative of what happens here in Luke 2. Normally, I, I would rather camp out and read through it all, but um, I think I can do a better job of summarizing what's happening here because, again, what I want to teach, what we want to get out of this today is, is kind of a heart-to-heart -heart message. The story, as I mentioned last week, Luke goes into great detail, giving us a road map of where and when this happened, that Jesus was born. And, and remember that Jesus is the Son of God. He has been with the Father in heaven. He knows perfection. And he's come here to earth to save the world. He is the Messiah. And the Jews, they, they were ready for a Messiah. They've been waiting for it for centuries, literally centuries. And they're kind of waiting for this, 
this leader to come on his stallion, his white horse, draw his sword, and save Israel from the Romans. They wanted to be saved physically. And God decides instead to send a baby to a humble family. And the beginning of his life doesn't even happen in a palace or, or even a home, but in a stable, literally a stable. His crib was a, a feeding trough for animals. The king of the universe, king of kings, lord of lords, came to earth as this fragile, vulnerable baby. And don't mistake and think that uh, this baby, if, if, if you put a lightsaber in baby Jesus' hand, it could have fought off the Romans. He didn't have superpowers as this baby. He was fully God, but he was a vulnerable, fragile baby laying in a feeding trough for animals. It was the humblest of beginnings. And I don't know about you, uh, but for me, being raised in the church, I always thought that was beautiful, cute. Uh, it was a precious gift. Uh, I'm a parent now of three children, two of which are adults, 21 and 19, and I've got a 16-year-old daughter. And I remember how precious it was to have them as babies. I actually enjoy them more now than when they were babies. This is kind of how I'm made, but... Um, there's something precious about a baby. And that's, that's the way I always saw the gift of Christmas, the gift of the baby Jesus. It's cute. It's beautiful that we have this baby and this story of a baby. But here's the thing. God doesn't do anything cute. He doesn't do anything pretty good. When God gives us a gift... And in this case, when God demonstrates his love for us, he didn't just give us a baby Jesus. He gave us Jesus who would grow, live a perfect life with the end purpose of being murdered on a cross. I don't know how many of you are parents, but this idea of giving up my child knowing that he would one day be sacrificed, killed publicly, brutally, horrifically, that would, be, that, that would end me. But the Bible teaches us that God loved us so much that he sent Jesus to, to die on the cross for us. Now, let me back up. I think I need to provide some history before the book of Luke. In fact, in the very first book of the Bible, in the book of Genesis, we see the story of Adam and Eve. It's the third chapter of a book of 66 books, and, and it's the third chapter where Adam and Eve obliterate perfection. Remember that God created the Garden of Eden to be perfect, and he walked with Adam and Eve. He was with them. He, there was nothing between them, literally nothing. They didn't even wear clothes. So there was this intimate relationship between God and man that was all obliterated, destroyed by the sin of eating the apple, disobeying God. And, and you'd almost think that God's like, oh my goodness, but he already had a plan. In that same chapter, he prophesied saying that one day your offspring, Eve, would make everything right. And what happened in Luke 2 was the beginning of that making things right. And here's the thing. Uh, to, to me, it blows my mind that God wanted to be in relationship with us again, just like the Garden of Eden. That's kind of what heaven's going to be like. We're going to be in perfect relationship with God. And he wants that for us so much that he sent his one and only son to come as a baby, live a full life, be killed on the cross as the ultimate penalty or the ultimate payment for our sins. The Bible tells us that the wages of sin is death. The payment, what we deserve for all of our sins is death. You sin? Well, okay, that is your ticket to death. But the free gift of God 
is eternal life. And that's eternal life with him in perfection, in heaven. Just like the Garden of Eden, he wants to be with us again like that. And Jesus is the one who can make that right. He's the only one. We can't fix it ourselves. I don't know about you, but I have not lived a perfect life. Okay, it's uh, noon today. I haven't lived a perfect day. <laughs> I'm sure, I don't know what, if I didn't turn my turn signal on in the car coming here, I don't know. I, I did something wrong today, I'm sure of it. And if I haven't, I'm sure I've got still lots of time left today to, to screw up. Um, and the wages, the payment for sin is death. That's what I deserve. But the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus. And, and to me, that is the thing that blows my mind about this gift. Again, we're just out of the Christmas season. We've exchanged gifts. Nobody can outgive God. He has given us the most incredible gift of all time. But there's one more thing that I, I learned. We were doing a study just before Christmas. And I learned this. I'd never heard this before, but it, it blew my mind. Um, I think that I've gone through life thinking that this is great. Jesus died for my sins so that when I screw up, he can forgive me. It's a, it's a, great, it's a great deal. It's almost like using a credit card. It's like when I go to sin, okay, okay, I tap my credit card. Here's... There you go. And later, I will pay my credit card. That's what Jesus does for us. He forgives us. And now we don't owe anything anymore. That's kind of the way I've, I've treated sin. It's kind of the way I've treated Jesus my whole life. Uh, but we were doing a study with a guy named Andy Stanley. And he teaches that's not what he came here to do. He, he didn't come to be our credit card for sin. He didn't just come to forgive our sins. Jesus came and died so that we could be set free from the bondage of sin. So that we wouldn't have to keep living this life of sin. And that teaching really has messed with my head. It has really challenged me to do better, to be better than just sinning, tapping my credit card and having Jesus pay that off for me so that I can go back to zero. God doesn't just want us to have a balance of zero and have those sin credits paid off. He wants to give us life. He wants to give us life and life abundant. That's kind of like a picture of a, if you've got a, a mug of coffee. I love coffee, so I chose coffee. And he doesn't just give us what we need. It's overflowing. There's like more coffee than we could ever. It's this life abundant. And sin drags us to death. It drags us away from God. It drags us to hell. And he wants life for us. He wants us to be set free from sin. He wants us to be new creations. Let me come full circle back to Luke 2. And again, I'm sorry, we're, you're, what you're going to see in 2021 is we, we like to go like right through, reading through the Bible. But there are some big teachings I wanted to do today. I want to come back to the birth of Jesus. When, when we remember in Luke 2, Jesus coming as this beautiful, fragile, vulnerable, vulnerable baby. I want you to remember that he's so much more than that. He is our Messiah. He is the one who came as a baby, lived a perfect life. We'll teach at Easter that he, he was crucified on a cross for our sins so that we could be free from sin, so that we could stop sinning. That's a, to me, it's a mind-blowing concept that I can be free from my sin, not just forgiven from my sin. I can be free from it. I can stop doing the stupid things that I do. That's what God wants for you. He wants to be in right relationship with you. He wants you. If you've never received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, let me explain what I mean by that. If you've never come to that point, that breaking point, saying, you know, I, I'm a sinner. I'm, I'm broken. I can't do this on my own. I keep screwing up. 
If you believe that Jesus came, lived, died, and then defeated death, all so that you could be in right relationship with God, if you want to believe that, if you believe that, and if you want to commit your life to following the ways of Jesus, then you can begin your new life as a child of God today. I want to pray with you. So if you could pray with me, let's do that together. Father, Father, I thank you for this time. I thank you for this opportunity to talk about you and the beautiful things you've done for us. Lord, I pray that um, right now you would inspire, you would soften our hearts and you would inspire us to become children of God. It, now, just a reminder, if, if, if we already are, if we've already made this decision, then we're already on the pathway that he's got for us. We are already his children following his path, working out our salvation. So we don't need to do this all over again. But if you've never received Jesus, pray this with me. Father, I admit that I am a sinner. I confess my sin to you, and I, I'm broken, and I'm lost without you. I believe that Jesus is your son, and that he died for my sins as a payment for the wages of my sin. So that I don't have to die. I believe that, and I will commit my life to following you, King Jesus. That You will be my king, you'll be my lord, you'll be my master. Pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. If you prayed that for the first time today, you are a new creation. And I like to say this. The word tells us there's a party going on in heaven right now. Literally, the angels are losing their minds, celebrating that you were on a pathway to hell, eternal separation from God, and now you are a child, an adopted son or daughter of God. And as you commit to following Jesus, you are on a brand new path. You're going a new way following him. You're going to have ups and downs. You're, going to, you're probably going to screw up. Jesus came to set us free from sin, but we're still idiots. And we'll, we'll find the poop along the way and we'll get dirty in it. But he's there for us. He's there to pick us up. He wants something new and better for us. If you, if you made that decision today, I know I would love to hear about it, but if you don't tell me, confess what you've done. Tell somebody that you are now a child of God and walk with them. And again, if you don't feel like you're in a place where you can be properly discipled, reach out to me. Uh, start with email. My email is david at nrchurch.ca. Let me know that you've made this decision and you are on a brand new pathway following Jesus. And I would love to walk through and see you discipled to learn about the next steps. All right. That's all we have for Luke 2. Uh, we're excited about next week where we can bring Luke 3 to you. Until then, be safe and be blessed.